Hey. Hey. Cheers to Cheers. you. Hey. Uh -huh. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Creative Happy Hour, where we get drunk on the creative possibilities every mm -hmm. single week with a different cocktail mm -hmm. that we relate to living your best creative life. <laughs> Me to say, I, I keep screwing up the name mm. of it. Lille, Lille. Or Why can't mean, I say it? Because it's, it's a French. Thing. It's a French. So Lille. It Lille. 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 It's Lille. Lille. In, in, yes, but it is a French aperitif. French right? aperitif. Yes. And so you guys may notice. Let's hold them up to the light. Mine is a little bit more golden because mine is pure and unadulterated. Pure and unadulterated. <laughs> and I have made mine into a spritzer, and that may have something to do with. This weekend. Right now, we're gonna do our usual thing where we yes. divide into the drinking part, which is now. Yes, and the thinking part. And um, the drinking part will be exposing what we are drinking, along with any pertinent recipes or history or tasting notes. And then we'll kind of riff on the whole idea of drinking this and our whole glass half empty, glass half full, yes. uh, creative thoughts for the week. And, um, and then the thinking part is going to be a lot more about how this relates to creative living, creative living and creativity. And our, we're going to be riffing on the idea of the aperitivo, wetting your appetite or kind of stimulating, stimulating, stimulating exactly. your, your awakening for creative, creative or entrepreneurial. Yes. yes. Everything, all of that good stuff. So that is it. So thanks for joining us, you guys. And we are going to get started. Let's taste it. Should yes. we give people yeah, some? Yeah, I can't okay. wait. I've been waiting. To yeah, I actually sipped on a second ago. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, so nice. I mean, mine's lighter, obviously. I'm sure that mm. yours is. <laughs> it's so much. It's so good. It is so good. I mean, so I was, this is white Bordeaux grapes. It is. It's Simeon grapes, which Simeon. the Simeon has that kind of golden sweetness to it mm. a little bit. And it makes things a little bit more syrupy. It makes it able to age a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, when we made our Sauvignon Blanc, we actually put some uh, Simeon into it oh. to make it more shelf stable. Yes. Which is always a good idea. And then this has also some herbals. Yes, it has uh, specifically peels of sweet oranges and bitter green orange oranges yummy. from Haiti. Ooh, yummy, yummy, yeah, yummy. So orange and it. green oranges. I feel like I'm on a vacation, which I need. <laughs> and then the right and then it gets mixed in oak vats, which I thought oh, was kind of interesting. I like wine. I didn't know that they would... Well, I don't know. I just, makes, for some reason, I just didn't. Yeah. Well, it makes sense to me because they're made in Bordeaux and mm -hmm. Bordeaux being like the prime, you know, wine making mm -hmm. area of France. And I think that that makes so much sense that they would use kind of what mm -hmm. they have on hand. Right. Right. Um, so the, it's two brothers. Right. I mean, it, the brand mm -hmm. was older, but I think the two brothers, the two brothers launched yes. it. Right. Paul and Raymond. Paul and Raymond Lille. Lille. OK. Lille. Fantastic. And they were from the Bordeaux area. Yes. And, and they were distillers, merchants of wine spirits. Nice, nice. And then they founded this company. Mm -hmm. And then they mixed in. So there's a little difference between this recipe that we're drinking and the version that they created back in the late 1800s. Right? Yes, they they included quinine because yes. that was during... Which was good for what ailed you. Yes, <laughs> it was good. I mean, from modern times, I've heard it's actually good for muscle cramps. Yeah, I mean, so, I think quinine is awesome. I mean, a lot of the tonic waters that we drink right. still have the, the, quinine. the quinine. But what's really interesting is is that they took out the quinine and we can't get our dates right. 85, 85 87. 87. Which I'm not Some, sure why they did that. But. I don't know. But, well, apparently they did it for mass appeal. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Oh. The quinine's kind of got that bitterness to it. I like that. That's probably... <laughs> so, I probably would have liked it better. I was having a conversation at lunch today, which it was um, one of the marks of a sociopath is that they, they prefer like bitter. bitter taste. <laughs> I was like, that's phenomenal. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I was like, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> like, that's good. But yeah. also, so I mean, it used to say Micah above yes. here. Now it's going to say Micah the sociopath. sociopath. I'm so sorry. But yeah, that's just... <laughs> Um, and it's I hear your the, gentle way of telling a me. little. Yes, I'm always gentle. You know me. Um, but yeah, but I think that it was to appeal to the popular. You know, I hear they the didn't want to appeal to sociopaths. Oh, here she is again. Can we oh, see her? I can't stand. Every time you need a drink. Ah, every time. Uh, so yeah, here she is. Okay. Mm. Um, I love how Fiona joins us, and mm -hmm. half the time we edit her out. I know she's a pain in the butt. She's <laughs> not like consistent about things. No, she doesn't um, really bring any. She doesn't bring anything to the table. Material, literally. Literally yeah. nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. So the um, it was to uh, appeal to the popular taste. 
And I feel that is very interesting. Maybe they were just hoping there were less sociopaths on Earth. But, uh, <laughs> but also, it's kind of funny because it was kind of their identity. I mean, well, the was their, kind of, of their it. signature yeah. flavor. In that. It used to be called Lele Kina. Yes. Which was... And it would be short. Hmm. Kina would be kind of the short for the name of the... Quinine, the quinine, yeah, tree, which was what? Oh, she, it was the cinchona, cinchona, cinchona. bark, yeah. which is from Peru. Yes, quinoa doesn't sound anything like that. But well, no, but it might be. I might be pronouncing. No, it you're not. I don't think you incorrectly. are. Because the damn French people decided that they were going <laughs> to. Ooh, bless you. <laughs> quinoa. Oh. <laughs> quinoa. <laughs> I've been sneezing all day because everything's blooming. Oh my god, with their allergies. Um, all the quinoa central. trees are. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Oh no, um, I know. So. Yeah, so they, you know, they included it, and I, really I have yummy, no I idea say. what it tasted like. It kind of. I mean, me I'm guessing. I know. I'm guessing it was just a little bit more bitter. I mean, I'm thinking probably if you think more, of an Angostura bitter or something that mixed into this, yeah. and I'm sure that you could probably more like that. What is the one that I love? Aperol. Aperol. Aperol well, this has, is the French. Yeah, and this yeah. is the French version of that, and I think that and yeah, Aperol has more of the bitter, more of a bite. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I like, love look that. at the difference. This is this is a little sweeter. Yeah, they say it's like sunshine in a glass, which I love. <laughs> we need that right now. Yes, um, but yeah, I, I think that that is it's very French. I think each European country kind of came up with mm -hmm. their version of the aperitif wine, and that's why we thought that was a really interesting thing. Yeah. of wetting the appetite. So we thought, ah, oh, how can we? bring that over to the creative side and so we will be doing that. well and i think it's but, interesting i mean just to tie it to the creative conversation is how they you know they all this time they kept the yes. quinoa in it and yes. then they decide they, like, boom, yeah they right, make a marketing, marketing decision yes well speaking of marketing this is the interesting thing this is why this lele was so popular um these guys raymond and good old what's his name paul paul raymond, paul and raymond paul and raymond um this is why they were so successful from the get-go like they were super in like their intention was just out right away they had the steps for how they were going to bring this thing to market how they were going to make it what mm. the story was going to be and i thought that was really interesting and then just the way they're advertising mm -hmm. you know, so they're advertising starting in the 20s i'm guessing mm -hmm. was um they had this artist whose name was what was his name robert wolf was that his name he went by some other weird name like Rafi's or something I can't remember right. but um he did yeah those super you've seen them like yeah if you go to any these are definitely French romanticized market, French market posters very much so exactly like those yeah. metal posters colorful they had one with this chick with all these flowers they were like yes. a quinine type thing very Peruvian looking chic chic very visible and so they totally followed that and we can and maybe post one on we, the screen of course well because that's what yeah. we do when we have like this massive hole in our information <laughs> or when we can't explain something appropriately we're like here's the here's word. the picture here's the picture so we do that and i think that's a good thing that we yeah, do that. Why not? worth a thousand words. worth a thousand of our words for mm -hmm. sure so mm -hmm. especially that so they did that with the posters which mm -hmm. i thought was major they regularly revamped not only the formula but the bottle itself mm -hmm. so that it would be a little trendier yeah the bottle is beautiful the bottle actually. is well the bottle is pretty classic now yeah it would seem but i believe that they um had revamped it a few times mm -hmm. and they had that rosé version yes in 2011 right when rosé was hitting the peak before the the massive rosé wine the uh, rosé you know, all day uh, yeah and the and the great rosé shortage of the hamptons um but they they had been really on the forefront of that trend as well with the pink uh what else did they do oh well already in the 20s they were being super selective about where they served it so they would totally wait for like a really important big reception something right. really you know elegant and trendy so it had this image it was interesting cuz i read an article mm -hmm. about, from some I don't know, connoisseur of aperitifs or what. I don't even know who he was. More than us, in the food world. Yeah, <laughs> more than us. And he wrote an article mm -hmm. and about this drink. And nice. he basically said that you couldn't find it or order it in Paris. It was very which was exclusive. Kind of, yeah, yeah. So that's what it was. It was you could only exclusive. order it at certain yes. cafes and certain places. That, was, and that was so strategic. That right? is so interesting. Right? Doesn't really. that make it feel, it makes it feel like it's just something more special. Well, you create a little scarcity with Completely. something. Completely. And then you're, you, yes. you know. You're making it situational as well. Yes. You can't just have it at home like we're doing, you know, poured into the wrong glass with which, like some half ice cubes. Which is another, I think, it's another, 
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that's another example of mm -hmm. framing the issue and how important oh, it is completely. whenever you're doing something creative. Yes. You know, and going back to, yeah. you know, you're, kind of having control of the narrative. You're thinking during the drinking oh, part. I can't believe oh, it. She keeps God. doing that. She keeps doing that thinking thing. I know. And she like, keeps trying to give me drinks so I <laughs> stop always. thinking. I try to do that. I actually like, think, think too much. more I when think I too drink. much. <laughs> I actually think more well, that, drink. And that actually is so true as mm -hmm. well. And that's part of the whole aperitif idea of wetting your appetite and starting to speak more and create more and, you know, think more when you drink. It's an absolute truth. So you can't help it. It's you okay. Can't. I'm I the only one it. who's I like, mean, woo, just blank. You know, you're just, like, long day. you're just like, whoa, lady. <laughs> I'm just like, I've had a long I don't day. want anybody to get hurt. You no, know I mean? no, We're, no. I'm not gonna like, don't sprain my brain. Like, it's, it's good. Yeah, but when we start talking about it, I mean, I for I know, sure you start making, I just like, open the floodgate. It's like just all these like light bulbs go on. She's such a creative. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, it's just you can't help it. You can't help it's it. It's just it's like it's just the way it is. So the um the other thing I love little pop culture biatch me <laughs> is the fact that the lele was an ingredient in the Vesper martini. Yes, you know so Ian Fleming. Uh, James Bond, mm -hmm. and then in the book it replaced and the, movie, the vermouth. It, 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 replaced, it, it, it the vermouth. replaced the re vermouth. And then, but the interesting thing in in the book, it's the lele, um, just normal. You know, they just say mm -hmm. lele in the Vesper Martini, and you know, again shaken, which people will argue is right shaken along. and up. Yes, and then, but then in the book, by the time the no, by the time the movie Casino mm -hmm. Royale came out. The recipe had been changed, so really he should have asked for the Lillet Dry because he's now asking for a different cocktail. Oh, yes, yeah. There you go. There I am trying to be scientific. Oh my god! After a long day, and she yells right? at me for getting too see? See? serious. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's too serious during the drinking part. James Bond at work. Yeah. She's... So, yeah. Um, what else can we tell you about this wonderful thing? Um, so the quinine was for oh. you know it's essentially you know. It, it became really popular during that time um, in the early, late... I, well, people were trapped. 18... When well, was the it? 19... Well, the, yeah, late 1800s. Oh, yeah, so it was the late 1800s. 1900s. This is when and people this were is traveling when, and doing the Grand Tour. Yes, but right? malaria was a problem. Exactly. People, typhoid, this is before we had, you know, any kind of yeah. infection control type of yeah. science. So this, you know, this is really the time that Louis Pasteur yeah. came into the picture and mm -hmm. was you know, basically telling people that, you know, these illnesses are caused by microbes. Right. And to reduce microbes. Well, people had no idea. Yeah, I so mean, they had was, no idea. That blew so their minds. quinine was yeah. considered essentially medicinal for malaria. Totally. Fevers. Totally. All, and yes. so, you know, I just think it was an excuse to drink, personally. But, I do, too. Of course. Well, um, everybody was drinking back then. But I think that the quinine actually did help for that. Yeah. You I know, people so were too. drinking it in India a lot. You know, all of those places. Yeah. I just actually visited uh, Stanford University with my son. Oh. And they were talking about Leland Stanford Jr., the son that Stanford University is actually named oh. after. And he died on his grand tour before he went to college because he got typhoid or something terrible. Oopsie. So yeah, oops. So there you and hence that's why we have Stanford University because they wanted to, you know, honor it. Yeah, yeah, honor his memory. But I was like, if this only he been yeah. drinking more, you know? The things that he could have been spared. He could have been drinking. He could have been mean, drinking instead of thinking. That's sad. <laughs> sad. That's sad. In terms of the placement, we were talking about framing the issue. Yes. Scarcity making it very elegant and at certain you know places and events so they decided the lele uh brand decided that uh, starting 1945 or so mm -hmm. that they wanted to really hit that american or anglo-saxon market sure and i'm like that's a fascinating move well yeah so well, why why would you want well, to break a into bigger market right yes and i think that they saw there was some kind of glamour to it i think that that you know, tapping in. Well, it's probably a lot of, I think I read about, you know, like it was one of Steinbeck's favorite drinks. And oh, okay. so yeah. there was probably you know who, who, Hannibal Lecter. Oh God. I know. I read that. It was so creepy. I, I was know. Like, I was like, Oh, I was like, I, thought, um, I, I think Chianti. When I, I was like, I don't want to attract <laughs> that kind of attention. No, was he a bit sociopath? <gasps> Oh my god. But this is sweet. This is Well, now it is. Well, yeah. yeah but, but maybe back for then. Hannibal Lecter. Ooh. Who knows? Yeah. Is exactly. Pre 1985? I don't know. I can't mm. remember. No, I think probably not. But they don't know that. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. So, so they, it maybe there mm -hmm. was kind of a, you know, a, I don't know. Maybe well, it, it, it was appealing, you know, it more. It was this glamour. More people were traveling to Europe. Yes. For pleasure. 
Probably. Yeah, I think so. But I think that U.S., like the U.S. and England were the center of the cocktail culture. Yes. I think a lot more than France. I mean, Italy did have quite a bit of a cocktail mm -hmm. culture, I would say. But when you think about the Savoy or you think about, you know, these mm -hmm. all these bars in New York and, you know, all of these kind of American or English places mm -hmm. that people would go to and, and they were kind of worshiping at the altar of the mm -hmm. cocktail, mm -hmm. you know, it's true. menu or the mixologist or whatever, like pre, you know, then there was a second wave of mixology that we kind of just have gone through. We're still going yeah, through. Yeah. Like the fuzzy navel. Exactly. I mean, like really, oh God. I, mean, I think we need, we need to do yeah. a whole episode on like gross eighties drinks, like <laughs> sex on the beach, yeah. fuzzy navel, yeah. like all these disgusting. And then we'll, we yeah. should tie maybe a piece of art. To oh, totally. That. Totally. Nagel. Drink. Oh, <laughs> to that art. Yes. We'll talk yeah. about Miami Vice and uh, like Nagel and you know gonna poster be, art. And then yeah. uh -huh. I think it's gonna be amazing. I think yeah. we need to do that. <laughs> That's gonna be good. But today, thank goodness, we're mm. not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um but so yeah, keeping and it classy it, keeping still, it folks. very classy today. But uh yeah, and then there was just constant, constant efforts at reinvention, you know, changing the visuals, changing the ads. Plugging, you know, in the right places, right events. Well, and yeah, and it's so interesting because back then it mm -hmm. would take, you know, it's a whole nother level. I mean, you don't have social media. I mean, think right, about but they've the continued world. that all the way through. That's the interesting thing is that they've continued that, and then now they're kind of focusing on the quality and the history. Mm -hmm. When before they were kind of this new, you know, this new thing. But I think that combining the idea of a brand with the visuals of the advertising, yes, was really, really. It's, it's a decision that was made, and I think it's something that they kind of carried through the whole way. You know, tapping the mm -hmm. right person to make your ad, making sure it's all over the place, making sure that it reflects like a certain story, story and mood and visual. Yes. And I mean, you and I can visualize those ads even today. I it's mean, so, I mean, it's yeah. it has such a romantic mm -hmm. essence to me. Yeah. No, it's incredible. It really does. I mean, it does. It, it, and, it, and it's really, it's a lovely drink. It I mean, is. Obviously. It is. That helps. But I think, okay, is it that special? It's not that complex. It's I not mean, that complex. So you what are the notes? Can you, make... can you say what the notes are that you're tasting? I mean, citrus and Citrus. Herbal, and bit. you know what it reminds me of, to be quite honest mm -hmm. with you? It reminds you can do me. That. You can be honest. Yeah. It <laughs> kind of reminds me of mead. Oh, it has it's got that it honey. has the notes of honey yes. or flower. Um, yes, yes, yes. It yes. has floral notes. Mm -hmm. It does, and that could have something to do with the grapes, the the sweetness of the, the grapes. Has that kind of, kind of floral, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it does remind me of mead. Yeah, it has that, that honeyed thing about it. Yeah, it, is, it does. Yeah, and which I like. I love mead. I mean, I think I we should actually do. We should. We, we should, should do some mead. Be really good because we yeah. can do something about. Um, hallucinogenic druids oh yeah i mean thing. they can do a yeah. whole arthurian yeah no like, i mean know. the whole mead I, <laughs> yes. I just i you know you I, did a mead tasting yeah, I did. yes i did so cool so we'll have to bring that we will to the we will for sure to our friends yes at creative happy hour exactly I but it does it has notes of of honey or floral to me it does it what does are you, what are you tasting that's kind of what i'm tasting as well i mean i'm tasting a little bit of a, of a citrusy mm -hmm. thing which might also be Part of the spritzer that I've made, so I'm not the and best person. There to is make. a slight bitter. There's a tiny, after, tiny, which but it's there not has strong. to be. It's not but strong. you need that if you're going to be making an aperitif or an aperitivo. Like you need to mm. have that kind of bitter or sour. You can't get away with just having something sweet. Like right. nobody's ever given Coca Cola as you know, right? An aperitif. You can't yeah. do that. I mean, and that's the thing that we can talk about now. Well, they do in redneck culture. Well, yeah, I'm in red, red, yeah, red, you red have a Coke culture. culture. You have a Coke. Coke and a smile. Yeah, you have a pop, right? You, have. you do. Well, that's. I think that that's mm -hmm. something that we can discuss now as part of our drinking part. Let's discuss what constitutes an aperitif. Yes, because that's what this is, and I think that maybe I mean a lot of people know what that is, but a lot of people might mm. like us kind of think you know what that is, and then you know maybe you don't know all of the you know concepts, the nuances. It. Yeah, of, exactly. Of the... So, what are the so qualities the... of an aperitif? So it's served before a meal. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that's really important. I mean, it's that's... usually dry rather than sweet. Yes, which this so, this I think is probably one of the sweeter of the aperitifs that is, you would have. It is. Yeah. It is a mm -hmm. sweeter because it often will replace vermouth. Yes. In a cocktail and vermouth. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get dry vermouth. Yes. However, I feel like this is more like a sweet vermouth. This is more of a sweet vermouth. It's more yes. of a sweet vermouth. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what else? I mean, it usually has herbs. Yes, it's bitters, it can be herb Yeah, exactly. It's all citrus. herbaceous. Yeah. There's an idea of I guess that it gets the taste buds it going. Stimulates. It it's stim a, yeah, it's, it's a, stimulant. a stimulant. So I think that if you asked for one of these, if you asked for a lily after dinner, it's not a digestive. Like, it's, yeah, it's different exactly. than a digestive. Completely... I mean, a digestive is going to be more. Which we can always talk about. Yeah, we can and talk about that. Too, that's a good one. Right. But, um, but there but, were yeah. lots of articles that I read, mm -hmm. you know, understanding the difference between the completely, digestive and, completely. The, and the aperitif. And, and there's an idea when somebody serves you an aperitif, you have this concept that this is not going to be an everyday no, it's dinner. a moment in time. It's a moment in time. It's very it's specific. Totally specific. Often consumed at happy hour, no yes. doubt. But when you're having this, when you're invited to somebody's home or you're going to a dinner, you know, at a restaurant or something like that, you know that that means that you're going to have something like a whole experience that's yes. going to follow. It's not just a normal, like, we're going to sit here and quickly go through this. You're, yes. you're kind of signing you're up. You're leading that, up to something. Right? You're, you're, you're signing up for a process. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that that's really interesting. I like that. that. I right? like thinking about it like that. Yes. I mean, well, I'm I not that I'm that. thinking right now. Good. Good. I'm not. No, I'm drink, I like please. drinking about yes. that. Yes. You like to drink <laughs> about that. Oh, let's drink about that some more. Okay. But yeah. No, okay. 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 Let's do it. Let's do but, it. But I like that idea. Yeah. The aperitif of, you know, what that means. There are also a bunch of really nice cocktails that are made with this and I was reading about them some really delightful recipes which where... one we just made was the corpse reviver mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's the corpse reviver there's also the vesper martini and the vesper about. martini but then there's some very like summery drinks that will add um lavender or violet mm. or rose all these pretty notes to it or even cucumber and oh, I was like, wait, we that's have, really nice. Yeah. We, got, we got our work cut out for us because yeah. those all sound really, Sorry. oops. Um, I think we have our work cut out for us. Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be plenty of things. To, super lovely. To yes, for with summer. Our right? I know. We have our little bottle. We're that's, all set. Oh, that's the other important thing is that unlike a normal wine, um, it's the Lillet is much more shelf stable or refrigerator stable. So once you open mm. your bottle and you're making your little drinks with it, you can basically keep it for at least a few months. So why? It, what, what uh, it's because it? of the herbs, and it's because of the it's because of the sweetness, actually. Oh, well. okay. The sugar, so the sugars, and the herbs both contribute to um, more stability. So that's great for us because that means we can. And play it's with the same it with me: more. more sugar, more stable. Yeah, always keep always. my sugar levels. Keep up. your sugar levels <laughs> up, and you'll be good. <laughs> so we thought we would talk about. Um, we always have our glass half empty, glass half full, mm -hmm. and I thought we would have a little debate this week. I'm sure oh. that you probably had. A, a, first of all, I want to know: Did you have any? other creative things happen to you this week before I break into my debate before we fight over creative this creative things uh -huh. happen to me yes it's been it's been a short week so far and it's been a tiring week oh, my <laughs> weeks just go into the next sometimes we feel now. like we're on autopilot which kind of sucks which is why I like to have this moment I like to have this happy hour with you so that we can sit no, down no it is and it's, it's really the we, pause button we can yeah we can yeah. kind of um mm -hmm. what's the word Reassess. Decompress. 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 Reassess. Um, analyze. Try to analyze. I mean, all yeah, of that. It's happy hour. Like, we literally it is have happy, happy hour. hour. It is so important because, yeah. honestly, like, I look for it. You know, for I us, too. it's become work. But we still look forward to it because it is that moment where all of a sudden we're like, oh, I am sitting down and doing something other than surviving. Yes. Which is No, nice. I'm super grateful because it's, it is, for me, too, I mean, when I do the research and I, you know, I do the reading and we come up with an idea and I... And I think about it and, you know, I mean, we go back yeah. and forth during the week yeah. and we talk Texting. about it and yeah, we text about it <laughs> yes. and things come to us and we're like, oh, yeah. it, it does kind of stimulate this other energy in my life completely, and, it's, completely. and it's really fun. It's fun and it's so helpful. And actually like a few of those concepts we'll be talking about later in our whole aperitivo for creative yes. living. What stimulates a creative life. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some really great one of those things. Yeah, there are so some many really great, great ones. ones. So I'm looking forward to, you know, not thinking too early, but when we will be thinking that. So, okay. Anything happen to you? Is too oh, well, so the week. only thing no. that really happened to me that during, so I was doing knitting circle mm -hmm. on Saturday, which I missed again. Yeah, I'm so she's super pissed. such she's not very because well, I suck at knitting. Yeah, and she maybe sucks. I've... But you okay? So I'm sitting there, and we have this kind of fancyish restaurant next to the yes. shop where I work. Yeah, and so very one of the charming, yeah, charming and fancy. Yeah. yeah, 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 a little you know, it's it's casual, but it's it's upper scale casual, yes. right? Because mm -hmm. that's kind of town we live in. Yep, yeah, and so. 
you know, I'm in there and then this guy comes over. He's mm -hmm. one of the cooks uh -huh. in this establishment and he's having his juice and his snack or whatever. And, and I'm doing knitting circle and I'm sitting there knitting and he, and he says to me, what are you doing? Like, I'm, I'm knitting. Circle. I'm having knitting this? circle. And so he says, do you think you could teach me how to do that? And I said, well, sure. Like, like if you're the only person in, who can't learn is this one. Yeah. I said, <laughs> you know, Karen is the only one yeah. that can't handle it. So yeah, I could teach anybody but her. Exactly. That's what I said. Good. And so anyway, so I said, well, you know, I don't mean to say this, but I don't usually get a lot of men asking me. But you to get teach so them. many men who are fascinated. I by get a lot of frequencies. men. Yeah, it's yes. really interesting. It's mm -hmm. definitely I'm putting out some kind of masculine masculine energy frequency because <laughs> yes, lots of men approach yeah. me more so than women. Yes. Yes. And and they are like, I want one of those. Yes. I want to wear that. You know, totally. It's really interesting. We also live in California too. So Where they're all a little metro. There's, There's a little, little you know, there. you'll yeah. see a man bun from time to time around here. Yes. Yes. So this guy, so, so he's mean? like, so I was like, sure, I'll teach you. So I teach him. He picks it up like this. Like, oh, because I was like, well, a lot of men don't ask me. And he was like, well, you better watch out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be knitting better than you by the time this is over. I'm like, okay. Oh, oh, so I teach him how to knit. He's so happy. And, and he says to me, he said, this is, this is such a joy. Oh, Do you, I love that. No, I mean, he was really kind of touched by the fact. And, See, and he amazing. wasn't, my friends were like, he was just hitting on you. And I'm like, no, he wasn't. No, I'm too old. I, People don't hit on me anymore. It just doesn't happen. I mean, I, no, I think that's amazing. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, I think I mean, maybe he was. He said he's going to come back. So he says, do you do that's this, great. you know, often? Oh. And I was like, every Saturday from two to four. And he was like, you have a date. I'm going to be oh, here next date. week. And I was like, no, but I mean. No, I know, he, I'm just kidding. He wasn't. It, I no. Think, I didn't I get any kind of date vibe. That's awesome. I love that. So I anyway, love that. Um, we, I, I want us to have a little debate. Oh, so, okay. Our debate is going to be so there's this whole slew of restaurants out there now that is kind of either started by an artist or that has a ton of art on the walls or that has. And for me, I was focusing on the whole visual art uh, slash movie angle, but I'm sure that you can think of a few that have maybe music involved or something like that. But I wanted to kind of go through a few of the examples and then you're going to tell me what you think of the whole thing because do we okay. think that it brings an extra dimension to? The food and the experience or do we think that it's kind of cheapening the art or do we think the art's elevating food i don't know i don't know let me see what you have and I will then i'll give tell you, you what i think my examples is restaurants designed by or inspired by artists mm -hmm. the first one being damien hurst has <laughs> who's like the last freaking person i'd want to eat in a restaurant designed by him by the way because you know the cow's cut in half and oh. all that nasty crap Anyway, he's got a restaurant called Pharmacy Number no. Two. He had a restaurant called Pharmacy Number no. One, and that shut down. I don't know why. Is that like Corpse Reviver One and Corpse Reviver Two? Probably, it's kind but of I the think same probably, thing. but yeah, but with like health department. I don't know. Ugh, I have no idea. So I'm already like right disgusted. So the <laughs> the theme behind this thing is like pharmaceuticals and pills, because like he has all those paintings with all the pills. Yeah, like, right. It's just, and I think he's got like coffin shaped bar stools. Not sure. But kind of iffy, I'm thinking. I mean, does that whet your appetite? Not even a little bit. Not, not so much. I'm thinking yeah. that that one's kind of a hard pass. Yeah. If you want to try it out, that one's in London. And, you know, yeah, yeah I'm kind of, when I read about that one, I was like, eh, mm. not so much. No. Not so much. Okay. Second one. This guy, uh, Ulrich Krauss. Ulrich Krauss. He's a German dude. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, his project is called the Zagreus Project. It's mm. in Berlin. And it's the same thing. It's kind of like a mashup between a gallery and a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of got these visiting artists coming through and this and that. I mean, German food, first of all, not my fave. Not really appealing. No, not my fave. And then I'm thinking... Visiting artists, like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm... What about that restaurant in San Francisco where it changes, the, the whole restaurant changes for the season? That's something that I'd be more into. It's good. I've I, eaten there. Right. And it has to be more consistent. You know Everything what I mean? Like, is... it has to be intentional. No, but the yeah. whole restaurant changes mm -hmm. the way it looks. Yeah, well, I the love that. The whole thing I is like... I was only there during fall because mm -hmm. I went there mm -hmm. with this guy I was dating for... Um, <laughs> it was like a birthday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dinner cocktail thing. And it and my birthday is in the fall, so mm -hmm. it was a fall season. Nice. So everything that was featured, including the drinks, mm -hmm. were some kind of take on the season of fall. Nice. And like and that. so the whole restaurant was done like orange brown tones. Nice. Everything was nice. Oh, that's interesting. And I mean that 
Like I can get behind that. Like that's something and the that food works. was good. Mm-hmm. Everything was served seasonal. Nice. So it was. I don't remember. I mean, it's pretty lame that I don't remember. But I know that is a bummer because yeah. it would have been really good as an example. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can always put it. We in can look it up and pop it up. It. Yeah. All right. It'll be All on right. The yeah, that'll be cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let me go with another example of a okay. restaurant that I have for you. This guy, Donald Bakler, he's got a restaurant on the Upper East Side of New York, super bougie. It's, it's, a, oh, his restaurant is called Caravaggio, by the way. Caravaggio. Yeah. And, um, like the painter. Like the painter. Yeah. Yeah. I, but, but then the wall of art is not at all Caravaggio type art. It's like oh. a bunch of drawings that look like they've been done by children of children. Kind of creepy and weird, like a whole wall of it. Again, I'm thinking, like, hmm. Do I really want to be dining with, and again, okay, Italian Uh food, I'm maybe a little bit more into the food portion, but a bunch of, ah, like, I'll, I'll, we'll definitely post a picture of this one. Put put an example of that. I'm thinking, again, appetite, not that awesome. Not that Yeah, I mean, again, it, I think, I mean, we're, if you want to have a debate about it, what I would say Yeah, I do. Yes. Yes. I, (laughs) I think the, the menu, the, you know, the ambiance, all that stuff is important Mm -hmm. to stimulating your appetite. I totally, But you don't want, I, I would argue that you don't want the art or the ambiance to to, to to exceed the ambiance of the food or the dining or the experience of the people you're with or, you know, it's, I think that that is overdoing it. Right. Well, I think that any restaurant that has a little bit too much of a concept, like, you know, the restaurants where you dine in the dark and all that stuff. Yeah. I just That's think that... never appealed to me. I'm just like, well, maybe out of curiosity, but really I can do that at home. Again, I could do that at freaking home. You can do it at home. And yeah. I don't know that I'm that into it at all. I'm not into but, too much theme. Yeah. No. I like to bring my own energy to the space yes. and have an experience that you kind of create with the people you're with. Right. I mean, I, and, and I'll you give you... You don't want the whole place to like override well, the experience that you're having with the people you're yes, with. Yes, I know. Like as we go on, I've got a few examples that I've actually been to that I kind of enjoyed in a way, but... Um, but what about going different. to like, there's a Moroccan restaurant mm-hmm, that I've been mm-hmm. to and there's you know, a lot of times they'll have, you know, the dancer, dancer or, and or they'll all have done up. Yeah. And the, and the restaurant is on theme mm-hmm. and that can be, you know, that's fun. That I can be quite, um, transporting. Yes. Yeah. No, kind of I believe. You. And that I think is fun. Like, cause sometimes you have that natural lag in the conversation or whatever. And usually in these restaurants that are a little bit more, um, longer, it's like a longer, it's not trendy. It's kind mm-hmm. of something, a, a concept that's been around for a long time. Yeah. Like the Moroccan restaurant where the dancer comes out. Usually the dancer comes out at that specific time in the meal when you just start to digest and you're kind of like, eh, you know, and there's, and a it, lull. there's a lull and that wakes up the lull. And I think that that's kind of yeah. cool the way that that's been done. So there's this other um, place that David Lynch, the filmmaker, mm-hmm. has a place called Silencio in Paris. And it's this really crazy, surrealist restaurant. And yeah, Paris is kind of like, been? I've not been to that one. It's kind of like a semi-private artist club, but oh. you can get in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> but it seems really intriguing in terms of the, you know, and, and there's, oh, there's a place in New York too that um, their claim to fame, they pretend that, well, pretend. Mm-hmm. They claim, but I'm going to say pretend because I think it's a lie, but they claim that um, Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, wrote The Telltale Heart. Um, there and based on their wine cellar. Wow. And that's part of their whole mystique. They're, yeah. And I kind of like that story. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, yeah, I like that. Like that restaurant, I mean, first of all, I like the restaurant. I so like it's one thing to go somewhere mm-hmm. for a drink. So one of the things that, you know, I often, when I was selling reclaimed wood, yes. I would tell people, oh, you they know, wanted a story. because people would want, you know, this mm-hmm. really exotic, mm-hmm. you know, dramatic wood in their house. And I would say, you know, it depends on your personality. How right. stimulated do you need to be in totally. your own house? Yes. How stimulated? I said yes. it's one yeah. thing if you go to the Wayfair Tavern in San Francisco yes. and they have this beautiful reclaimed wood floor. But then you can go home and chill. And then you're you're stimulated by it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the texture, the color, the you know, everything about it. Yeah. And then you you get to leave in an hour and a half. Yes. You know, it's another thing to have it in your home, right? And have to deal so, with it. So so those down. things are really stimulating. Absolutely. Apertivo. Exactly. You know, Exactly. So and one that I was going to talk about, so the two that I was going to talk about that are kind of interesting is the restaurant Sketch in London, <laughs> yeah. right? And that one is, it's all pink. It's like a freaking oh. Instagram, you know, gone wild. Yeah. And they rotate the art out and the whole space is super pink, and it, but it's kind of comfortable and it's kind of weird. You kind of feel like you're in Clockwork Orange or something. Oh, okay. Super random. You know what I mean? 
but it's it works in a way but it's a little too much. So exactly what you were saying yeah. about being overstimulated. Like, I'm not going to go eat at Sketch every weekend. I'm not going to do it. No. Like no, no, a no. novelty thing. Yeah. Right? And then the the last one I was thinking of that I went to recently was in Miami. There's the Faena, which is, you know, the new Miami arts district mm-hmm. extraordinaire. And I had a lovely cocktail. Actually, I had an aperitivo. Um, mm-hmm. Sitting outside, looking down on Damien Hurst's uh, gold mammoth skeleton Mm -hmm. that's right there looking down and that really felt very special being in the presence of a monumental work of art Mm -hmm. you're like oh that's kind of cool but that was a moment again see moment in time moment in time you you didn't live there i didn't live there and this was before i went to dinner i'm kind of getting started you're getting wetting my appetite yeah exactly conversation yeah all of that stuff and that worked really well but then we went to pow which is a restaurant in the same property Mm -hmm. another damon hurst work of art which is like this gold but skinned um unicorn mm. like with the muscles showing us oh, that was freaking weird anyway <laughs> um big fan big fan uh but but that i felt like it was first of all they positioned it properly mm. where it's really up high so you see it when you walk into the restaurant when you're sitting down at your table it's not really it's in not in your space. space yeah no so then you can focus on the food yeah you know which what is mean? what you want people to totally, do in totally. your restaurant that makes yeah, sense exactly and it's actually not a new concept because they dug up in pompeii literally like some of the okay. restaurants had major works of art on the walls and i'm like oh that's so fascinating yeah that is right? fascinating it's really cool and then dinner theater of course is hardly a new concept I no mean, I've, people... I've been to dinner yeah, yeah which could where be you fun go see not, a play right? yeah, yeah like that can work it's more you know, like little, if you have kids or something totally there's the whole you know and then in provence you have all these restaurants that all the artists went to and that they would mm-hmm. pay by you know making a painting and it's a great concept too but there's this restaurant tour and i'm trying to remember his name oh yes 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 fergus henderson uh fergus henderson is this guy he's got a restaurant called saint john in london and he refuses to have anything on the walls and no music whatsoever he oh. just wants people to focus on, on the, food. the experience. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's the antithesis. Total yeah. antithesis. And I yeah. thought that that was kind of cool because that somebody actually picked up on the fact that so many of these restaurant tours depend on the yeah. ambiance to kind of yeah. make their place happen. And this yeah. guy's is like, screw it. Let's let's go the opposite. Well, way. how many times have you you've heard people say, like, the food is really good, but the ambiance oh, no. sucks? Yes. Or yes. the ambiance is really great. It's but a the beautiful food's place, yeah. but the food is not so good. So what, which are, overpriced so which are you? Do you? Are you like to be swayed by ambiance or by food food see i have to admit that the ambiance makes up for a lot for me mm. unless i find that they i can tolerate to it, it if, to, it's, you know? if i'm just getting a drink mm-hmm. or something like that oh, yeah, it doesn't sure. yeah i'm not gonna go to a place that yeah. you know where i have to compromise the ambiance right no however no. for food yeah i've gone to some kind of hole in the wall places where the food was delightful but I have to say that if the ambiance was even a little bit better, it yeah. would have made me like it that much more. Yeah, you're like, you, you, know? you wonder if, like, the health department even knows Seriously, they exist. Exactly. Kind of places. I've been to the, oh my God. You're like, so thank many God them. the food is hot. Right. And, like, spiced right. a lot, you know? Oh I've been to some places where I literally will go, and I'm super picky, but I've gone with friends where I'm like, don't go to the bathroom because I know that they'll have to yeah. walk through the kitchen yeah. and see it. And, and then like, you're, yeah, we're, we're done. done. We're done here. We're done. So, yeah, that's yeah. terrible. Speaking of done, are we yeah, done? With I the think whole I'm done drinking because yeah. yeah, I'm thinking let's transition to the thinking yeah. part. Okay, we're Here's back. You. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers, and we are back for the second part of our wonderful video podcast. The thinking part. Yes. yes. Creative yes. happy hour does some thinking. Oh, yeah. It's going to hurt. It's going to We hurt. drink and then we think. And then we think. <gasps> and we think we're thinking much better because we've been drinking. We're relaxed. We're relaxed. We're and the, stressed out. The creative juices are flowing. They are. We've had our aperitivo. Aperitivo. We're ready. Yes, we are yeah. liquored up and what? Yeah. Buttered we're, up. Yeah. <laughs> we're buttered up. We're liquored up. I don't know what Whatever you, yeah. Right? At this point, like, we're agreeable. Any, anything right? you want to do. So I think that today was, like, a perfect opportunity to talk about what to do to get the creative juices flowing, like, that aperitivo for your creativity. Yes, if the you stimulus. Feel, exactly. Like, if you feel that you've been stuck in this rut of, like, all work, no play, or you feel that you want to try a new project, but you've not 
you know, been able to because the pressure is getting to you. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, what are we going to do to relaunch that creativity that we all need in our lives? So you read an well, article it that was really, that the, yeah, right? it turns yeah. out that there's a lot of things that you can do to stimulate your creativity. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, with the internet, I wasn't that worried. No, no, no. <laughs> so I, um, yes, I read an article on stimulating creativity. And, awesome. And if we um, find the title of it, we'll put it yes, up there. I mean, it that's was, how yeah. cool we are. I mean, I kind of compiled different ideas from different articles. And that is the meaning of creativity, It right? really we is. Make links it's, between things. Yeah, that don't you use your resources. And, yeah, hmm. and we just tie all together in a creative together. manner right. and that's what we do with a little bow yeah with a little bow pretty little <laughs> bow what color is your fiber frequency bow oh, that you're it's a uh, neon for <laughs> neon sure bow. it's neon i know i, like I wear it. a lot of black but i love neon you've got a colors. neon aura yeah, yes i do i agree perfect so, okay so mm. what did this well what did so these multiple some of the stuff? yeah some of the things were you want to consume content that's way outside your comfort zone. So Ooh, do something. I, you do this all the time. I do it all the time. You do it all the time. And I kind of love that because I saw for a while that I was kind of on this. I was like a one trick mm -hmm. pony, like consuming one type of content. And I really actually literally note when I read something or consume yep. something in a different way that's not in my comfort zone. I really like. I can almost feel the connections. No, it, it, you like, feel the sparkles, tingling, tingling, tingling in yes. your brain. No, really, it's, you it's, really do. It's really cool. Like, and it doesn't even matter if, like, if you're a mega creative and you're reading something about business, for example, mm -hmm. like that doesn't feel like it's a creative thing, but it actually really is. It really is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's all you know. It, it's pretty much standard procedure for me to read yeah. nonfiction, fiction. You're so good at I read that. knitting books. Yes. I, you know, I do all kinds of, you know, I listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. I watch podcasts. You know, I, I watching is best, I think, these it, days. Yes, watching yes. is, yes, watch. <laughs> Watch us because you know we get we get prepared for this. You know, we, we do love to go on camera. It's we fun. do. It is fun, and we want to share our fun. So yeah. you know, so, and definitely don't see that little thing that's in one of these corners. I can never remember which one that says subscribe. Like that's not just it. decoration. Touch it. Like yeah, yeah, you need to push that. If you push that, it's amazing yeah. things will happen. Yeah, that's like creative juices will flow <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yes. So okay, so consume content way outside your comfort zone. So you know. Pick a book that appeal. You know, maybe the title appeals to you, or the picture of the you know on it appeals to you. I love judging Read a book it, by its cover. It, yeah. Something random, but like judging it, but not judging it overly, but being like, "Huh, oh, this looks interesting." I will go to the library and just randomly Hell pick yeah. up books because yes. it's free. You don't have to pay for it's, them. And yeah, if it's not. No, you just take them right back. Exactly. Like it's so, no risk. I mean, my husband and I used to go, and we would back when you'd go to like the blockbuster or whatever now we'll do it right. on netflix where we'll be like okay let's randomly search for movies which with some name that we've kind of picked out yeah yeah, yeah. in the title and we're like let's check Ooh, that out yeah <laughs> that's just a fun right yeah that's yeah. a fun it's exercise kind of, the, yeah it's kind of fun we'd end up with a lot of like Dolph Lundgren shit because you know <laughs> probably our words are not that complicated but right you know it's it's fun it really is yeah well, speaking of words another uh, exercise that they recommend is writing a five hundred word article with no topic whatsoever so so just write what, a 500 rambling? yeah just write an article I about like it essentially you know the exercise is you know write a 500 this is you know what they're recommending in this list that i read in this article uh -huh. write a 500 word essay or or article okay. about you know a topic no topic whatsoever so it doesn't you don't have it you're not necessarily like oh i'm gonna write an article about pumpkins you're just basically rambling and whatever like pops a, into your head yeah, you're just kind of like, like a free write. free association yeah okay. I like that. That's why, honestly, I have to say, like, I'm so used to writing on topic that, like, that's almost stressful to me. Like, yeah, it totally freaks me out. Like, if you went into a class and they said, write, write, an about art, write a 500 word essay on nothing. Yeah, that's incredibly It, it would be weird. absolutely fascinating to read. Though. It is Maybe fascinating. We should try it. We should. That would be it so should fun. be our homework. That, that would be write. so fun. Well, you know, and then we'll it, tell yeah. you what happened. And you can guess if you know what the topic is. Yes. Name my topic. Right. right. Name the topic. Yeah. I did this in the writing group that I, you know, do in Marin County each week. Um, we nice. did writing prompts and it was really interesting because it was kind of writing about something kind of random and it got my writers writing more than they usually do. Oh. And they were kind of freaked at first, but then they're like, oh my God, we got so much writing done. I'm like, yeah, yeah sure that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's a similar fun. type of yes, totally. stimulating yes. creativity. Mm -hmm. So, um, they, they recommend go see a movie in the theater. Not not at home, but go in the theater. I, I think, you know, so going... Agree. I, I, 
But yeah, it's very stimulating. It is. And also, well, you're sitting in the darkness. Mm -hmm. You're not in your comfortable yes. environment. So yes. you have to pay better attention, yeah. I think. But also there's that energy in the room. Like either there's nobody there and it's you're like mm -hmm. making this thing or going to this temple of movie making or movie mm -hmm. watching. Like this dedicated space. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. And, and there's something about, yeah. And there is kind of a theme that I kept reading over and over mm -hmm. about changing your environment just period totally go change totally. your environment and if you're used to doing creative activities mm -hmm. in a particular office or a particular space they say change it around switch it up switch it up yeah put totally. some different things in there that will stimulate maybe a candle maybe something you know a yeah. painting something that will stimulate they say that about relationships too they're like if yeah. you are in get a relationship bored. for a long time and yeah no and you get bored they're like go somewhere new like that's why people go on dates Yes. Instead of sitting, because I mean, they could sit there and spend time at home. I think right? we should do a dating podcast too. Oh my God, that'd be so good. Yeah. Let's set up like all these different creatives. Yeah. Oh yeah. Would love that. Ooh. That'd be so much fun. Yes. Okay. That, yeah. yeah we need to write fun. that down. Yeah, That's yeah. another thing they say. Write things if down. If you have yeah. a creative idea that mm -hmm. comes to you, even it if it's silly, Write it, down. write it down get in the habit of carrying a notebook with you they, they say, or yeah. putting it in the notes on your phone because everybody has that totally. ability now totally. so put the write it down and just the act of knowing that you're going to write it down mm -hmm. means that you actually pay more attention to those fleeting thoughts yeah but i when you know i always say one of the biggest lies i ever told myself was no need to write it down i'll totally remember i'll that. totally remember yeah. it yeah Bullshit. i mean so Bullshit. yeah yeah paul and i have a, a thing where we always write down beer names or I band love, names. But you always we'll be like, that's a band that. name. No, that's a band name. No, that's no. a, and it's so stupid, but, but it's fun. It's really fun. And yeah. it gets that, you know, and then you're like, oh, well, what about this? And what about that? And yes. it gets the conversation going. Exactly. But um, we were talking about the space, you know, about going to different spaces and everything. And one of the creativity wedding things that I had seen was going to sacred spaces. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that one really resonates because those sacred spaces were made with the goal of getting people to kind of, you know, focus and worship and think about something outside of outside themselves. of themselves. And the actual in spaces, an abstracted, yeah, mytho mythological, yeah, yeah. abstract, Mytho blah, 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 blah. yeah, yeah, easy for uh -huh. me to say, right? Yeah. After I drank for you know thirty okay. minutes, yeah. right? Yeah, but that's <laughs> but I think those sacred spaces are incredible, and I, you know, I have a degree in you know, medieval literature and one of the things that I love in terms of the creativity that came out of that sacred representation mm -hmm. is that the artists were completely outside of themselves because they're doing something for a greater mm -hmm. force so instead of being driven by ego they're driven by something bigger than they are mm -hmm. and I think that that really enables them to create something incredible and I think that the spaces mm -hmm. themselves are incredible I and mean, I just love that but even a space that's like outdoors like have you been to like Antelope Canyon and have you been to all of these no um, no but I've been to a lot of you know like um mountains you right. know destination mountain places right that people and, consider to be sacred yeah right? like yeah. you know and, and there's always some kind of you know, the Native, Amer the Native yeah, Americans legend, considered, and yeah. What's your spirit um, animal? <laughs> <laughs> and I've been to lots of Gothic cathedrals. Yes. And I've been to lots so of, much, yeah. you know, places like that where you, you go in and you light a candle, whether you're Catholic I or not. I love the whole candle thing, yeah. too. Like, that is... Doing rituals. And, rituals. and I actually have a little altar at my house. And I it's, love that. You know, I love the, that. The, the Virgin Mary is kind of the theme. Uh -huh. And it's the altor that... Um, protects the mother child I love, I love that. yeah well, so it's perfect for your so adults, all like yeah. candles and sometimes you know I'll do it just to when your child change being particularly bad you'll like yeah, her, just be like scare the um, shit out of her yeah I'm just gonna start a bonfire <laughs> and burn it all down you know just <laughs> we're gonna start over no but the candle thing yeah you're so right and the altar thing I like the idea of an altar like it's I a think, shift yeah in consciousness it and really really, it really is. shifts you and it's like you literally putting the things that are kind of important to you mm -hmm. and that you want to focus on like putting that in a place of respect mm -hmm. and taking it seriously for what it is and I just think that that's awesome I it love is that. it's like a spiritual yeah happy hour totally it is a spirit yeah it's a spiritual happy I, hour I like that I mean you know that would be a lot less fun than you know the creative drinking <laughs> one that we do because we'd probably feel guilty about drinking but maybe we'd be like ayahuasca ceremony happy yeah. hour <laughs> oh, we're gonna oh, do a ceremony let's see if psycho yeah. you know <laughs> we're gonna do ayahuasca and finger paint <laughs> yeah. yeah it's gonna get real creative up imagine? in here yeah no I mean it could happen you never I know think, I totally you better it. stay tuned because we'd I be mean, vomiting though we yeah buckets but that's if fine can, we just you know we vomit off camera and we come back on 
Everything we can works do that. out. Once we're, yeah, once we're comfortable. Let's camera. not overthink it. I know let's it's not thinking we should just part, go with but it. we shouldn't overthink You're it. You're so right. I think that, yeah, let's just go for it. Let's write it, write it down. Write it yeah, down. Yeah, write it down. I need to take notes. Um, so apparently there's a society for the neuroscience of creativity. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. So, oh, that's so people cool. are studying this. You know, scientists are studying this. I love it. I and, love it. Yeah, and they're looking into what happens to your brain. They should look at brains. our brains. Like, what I mean, I really would like to. Um, <laughs> maybe you can help me write. I really would like to write a book about, you know, your brain on creativity. And I'm sure there's really? lots of books already. There are, and I mean, I I think that still like drawing on the right side of the brain. Right. Was a really, really interesting one that actually was looking at kind of the processes that happen, I think. But they can really, sc they can scan your brain now. Oh, and they can, now there's they can, so they can see many dreams now. Yeah. Literally. I don't know if I'm into that. Right? But they literally can. I mean, that's the freakiest thing ever. Yeah. Like, I yeah. I mean, I'd be I, up for that at all, but I mean, I'd we're going to have little else's. dream avatars cruising yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. No, I can. I mean, it's, it, it's it's right around the corner. It is. No, it's quite great. Yeah. And, and, and we're not going to have Woody Allen to make a movie about it. Like, thank you. Are we gonna do? <laughs> poor thing, poor, poor Woody. Well, I don't know if he's. Oh, yeah, but come on. yeah, but no, I think that, that that's incredible. So what else? So what they essentially say with? that you know creativity is like a muscle; it has to be exercised for sure. to make it stronger. So for you can sure. actually, you know, there's all kinds of brainstorming exercises you can do. To, yes, you always. know, and we gave you some ideas on being more cre creative, but mm -hmm. you you generally, you know, you want to exercise it do Absolutely. creative activities on a regular basis uh, and as you with do no them pressure you become more yeah. creative absolutely but you know? i think that i would add to that that they recommend to do these activities and try to maintain them for 30 days or sure. so so that it becomes a creative habit that does not mean this needs to be your new job or your new like you don't need right. to have an art show just because you started you know taking up finger painting for example right. i mean it's it's try something without that ego trip of being like i have to make it good right and without the pressure of being like oh this has to be something right i mean if you torch everything you made it doesn't matter you, you did it you can apply it to anything you Completely. can be like i'm gonna dress more creatively i'm gonna Completely. wear a different color every week or every how day of the week how or, many times have i said that and, and every then time. i wear black yeah. every time <laughs> like hey, you know maybe that's not <laughs> yeah that's not the best one no, but you know but you, you can, can but you i love do that. it in cooking you could do yes. it in, you know there's a lot of ways to mm. apply it yeah um so they essentially say that you know cells that fire together in the brain wire together Oh, I love that. Yeah, Those who I fire know. together, wire together. I know. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, like, cells that fire together, wire together. We should so make a cells. Valentine's card like that. I <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's Day is over. What's the next? Easter? Uh, so yeah. I'm sure there's some kind of fertility ceremony that we could do yeah. for, you know, some random like goddess ceremony that yeah. somebody knows. We're in Marin, man. I'm sure. Let's go Anything. and contact our local Anything Wicca chapter. Happen. Yeah. I'm our sure. local Wicca chapter. <laughs> I mean, I'm all, you know. Right? I'm down with Wicca. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think I, that I've done work. some Wicca on some. See? You've people. done some, yeah, you've done some yeah, I've done major some, voodoo Wicca. We don't I've discriminate. Done some chair side Wicca. <laughs> chair side Wicca. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But yeah, um, I love that thing about, so, okay, can you tell me more about the cells mm, that mm. fire together? Where to, so basically you're creating new connections. Is that what you're saying? You're yes. Like, and then there are. Yeah. Right. So when you're creative, you're stimulating. And I, you know, I didn't get, you know, that's what the scientists are for. I'm just so <laughs> you're reading, drunk. Yeah. You're reading on the surface. Yeah. I mean, la, 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 reading it, something new. <laughs> no, but I mean, that is the idea, you know, and, and there's all kinds of science in, in, you know, all different regions of mm -hmm. brain activity that, you know, doing new activities. Oh, so you know, incredible. Cross puzzles, and, yes. sudoku, you know, all mm -hmm. these things create more stimulus. And um, basically, you these little dendrites, they grow and they right. expand and they, you know, you get more brain activity. Right. I don't think you can, I don't know, There, I, I wasn't clear if, if you can get new, you know, once a neuron dies, I'm not sure. No, that no, they, they're saying that's what they used to think. Remember how they're like, oh my God, we're drinking yeah. and we're killing brain cells? We're yeah. fucked. I mean, yeah. fucked, fucked, fucked. Yeah. But actually, <laughs> I have read that. Especially. It's not true. Yeah. You actually can. The brain is more plastic. It's more plastic, yeah. which is fantastic news for me. Yeah. But I was actually reading about, uh, it was Alzheimer's research, mm -hmm. and they were saying that they had done this study on this group because when they when somebody with alzheimer's dies they see that there's this plaque buildup that's 
you know, preventing the neurons from firing and well, connecting. Yeah, because there's less the circulation in the brain. Right. The receptors are not catching these, you know. But they I feel that a lot right here, right now. Oh, man, I swear. Um, so, but I read about, so there were these nuns that they studied and they had all lived long lives because they're not drinking and smoking and, you know. You know, whatever, it's not good to stuff. brag when you're a nun. I know. God damn it. Anyway, they looked at these nuns and when they died, they all died of, you know, advanced old age. And not a single one of them had Alzheimer's symptoms. So they're like, this is very interesting. And these nuns were very progressive. So they're like, you know what? You can do, you know, research on our brains, you know, once they donated their bodies to science, which I thought for nuns was very open-minded. Yeah. Literally I... open-minded. Oh, my yeah. God. And so they looked, <laughs> <laughs> they looked and they found that these nuns actually did have the plaque buildup. They oh. had all of those um, signs of Alzheimer's, but none of the exterior symptoms. And why mm. was that? That's because nuns are always learning and reading and yes. gardening and activities and outside and socializing and all of this stuff. So basically they were making new connections to bypass the connections yes. that had broken down. And like, that is fantastic. I mean, if that's not enough, I mean, yeah. never mind. just, you know, creativity brings more joy right. and you no, know, all these other benefits, saves your ass but, it, but like then you're yeah. not just a mumbling, oh. you know, well, we are, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, it literally like no, it, saves it your brain. Well, yeah, because your because creativity builds new connections yes. between things. And literally so in our little noggins, yes. we are building those new connections. So that was very encouraging to me. I thought that was a good thing. It is. A another thing about the brain firing, they say, you know, for creativity to like get moving because the circulation mm -hmm. literally physically get outside, gets things, go for hikes, be in nature. But nature is also, it's almost a sacred space. Thing, yeah, right? it I is. Mean, nature That's a two is, for one. It you is. get exercise, it, you it get two sacred it's, spaces, it's a two for one. Yeah, it's beyond just that mm. um, exercise. I mean, they. I think they've done studies, or mm. I, might, I might be talking my ass, but I really believe that it's true, <laughs> that if you exercise in the gym, and you exercise outside and in nature and everything else, I'm sure that if they do a brain scan, there's a difference. I'll oh, bet, for I'll sure. Bet, for right? sure. In the result. I mean, I think that For that's... sure, because like, yeah, I'm not even going to say what I was just thinking. You know, I, I cannot work out in a gym because I, yeah. number one, I don't want anybody looking at me no, in that no, weird no. little spandex thing that I would have to wear <laughs> and, you know, the heavy breathing that would go on because I'm so out of shape right now. <laughs> but never mind that. I don't want to look at them. No. Like, I don't, I don't want look to at them. see. I don't want to smell them. I don't want to smell them. I don't no. want to, I don't want no. to share mm -hmm. the machine with you. That is no. disgusting. Sharing is me. not caring. It's not. It's, it's sweat. Forget other bodily fluids. I, I don't just want to go do outside. It. I don't want to touch anything. Mm -mm. Or anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or anyone. Unless you yeah. want to. I mean, no. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's way oh better. So anyway, that's just my opinion. But um, yeah, no, I love that. Did you have any other yeah, I mean, creativity just, tips? Yeah, I mean, essentially just pay attention to the ideas that come to you. I like the paying attention. Pay attention. So that, yeah, for sure. Like I think that being mindful, like reading a book or watching a movie mm -hmm. or whatever is not always enough. I mean, you can do those things so incredibly mindlessly that is like you're wasting, it's like you might as well be on your phone. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's actually a good exercise to watch a film with someone. Mindfully, with some my, intention. And then have a discussion about it. If you, you know, know, because yeah. that is going to build totally. all kinds of connections. Totally. It's yeah. going to reestablish, you know, you, the story. You're going to make yeah. other connections. It's just. It's going to help your memory of it. You're going to look and see. Yeah, see yeah. more to it. And the fact of watching the movie, knowing that you're going to have that connection mm -hmm. with the other person afterwards, I think that you watch it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And for me, since I've been teaching my little writing class on Wednesdays, I have kind of taught my writers to read books in as a writer, watch movies as a writer. Right. And they have been coming into class and they're like, oh my God, so I watched this movie and I was looking at the conversation between these characters mm -hmm. and I saw the foreshadowing and I saw this and I saw that and I saw the link and I saw how they were repeating the themes and I was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm actually getting somewhere with these people. Yeah. And so, and that is just like when you're doing the physical activity, mm -hmm. do that mindfully too. They talk about mindful movement, like things like Tai Chi and yoga, where you're kind of getting in sync with your body. But I think you get in yeah. sync with your mind. Well, it's true. And well. a lot of yoga classes that I've gone to, not lately, but you know, they, they walk, 
some of the teachers in the beginning of the class will say, set an intention yes. for your class. Would you and like I to dedicate your class? And I thought that was some kind class? of bullshit, but then I realized that, yeah, there you know, is something, there's um, something to it. There is something to it. And mm -hmm. sometimes that, you know, they'll say dedicate, you know, if you'd like to dedicate your practice to someone. Put and when on the altar of your yoga mat. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you do that, you're, you know, you're, you're in touch with a different aspect. You're not just Complete. doing a workout. You're not just working out. That's exactly like. It's a like, bigger yeah. experience. And it is. And I think they say like having people in the room, you feel that energy in the room. Yes. And I think that some of that energy is a creative energy. I think that you become more receptive to those things, you know. Yeah. And it's, no, that's, that to me, doing things with intention. Mm -hmm but also not taking yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. So you do it with intention. You do it to the point where you feel like you want to and you can and you whatever. But if the minute you start feeling kind of stoops, you know, like, stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Like, it's it's like when you're trying a new Oh, God, I never, I never do anything. I mean. Right? No, but it's it's like if you start doing something, don't take it so seriously. Like, you have to excel at it. And you right. have to be so serious about it. And um, it's funny because I was listening, like so many times if you hear like all these business gurus and everything, like tell everyone, like if you're launching a company or you're starting something mm -hmm. or you're starting a diet, mm -hmm. tell everybody. And when it comes to creativity, I think it's the opposite. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that the pressure of telling people you're doing this, all of a sudden you're expecting a certain result. Mm -hmm. And I don't think creativity is necessarily results oriented. No, it's yeah. not. It's mm -hmm. not. Re it's not result oriented. No. It's, it's more of, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a building practice that's really for you to experience yeah. and build on. I mean, if totally. there are results from it, that's a separate thing, mm -hmm. but I agree. You know, I think what we're talking about is stimulating the process completely and, completely. and starting there. Yeah, exactly. So what do you do personally? Like when you're about to get into the zone to start a creative endeavor, you know, if you're about to play a piece of music or you're about to write something or draw something or knit mm. something, do you have like a little thing that you do your little creative aperitivo? Not that you necessarily consume though. That's yeah. I mean, I have a lot, I have a lot of them that I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, like I said, I'll, sometimes I'll light candles. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll go for a hike. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been on a hike and I will get, you know, ideas about colors or ideas mm -hmm. about, you know, another thing I love to do is go to yarn shops. Yeah. I love I'll, to I'll go, go to bookstores. I love to go to bookstores. Yeah. I um, go to yarn shops. I go to bookstores. Um, you know, all different places like that. I'll just go to junk stores sometimes. Oh, like I love, I love to I love look that. at junk. Me too. Oh my God. You know, those things together. Looking at junk will really stimulate, awesome. you know, if you go to like a Goodwill or a junk store mm -hmm. and look at the old, you know, dishes yes. and stuff like that. And go with a creative friend who's going to be yeah. like, Hey, okay, let's see if we can find five uses or five ways to transform this object. Yeah. One and I think that's so much fun. One of the things that um, I've done too is, you know, going to the Goodwill in Petaluma, uh -huh. I shouldn't even be saying this but I, I don't think it's the case so much anymore but there was a period of time where they used to have a lot of old albums for really Ooh, inexpensive wow. uh -huh. and you can buy an album you know a, a record player for right. you know 89 right. bucks yeah so I have a record player mm -hmm. and so Paul and I would go and nice. we would pick out random, like anywhere yeah. between like heavy metal, yeah. folk music, and See, lots of classical music. That's jazz. an example of how it's like low commitment. And yeah, right? you spend and five bucks. And then you could bucks. do something amazing. You yeah. spend five bucks. You go home. Mm -hmm. You have a couple drinks because that's, you know. Drinks are an aperitif. And, and, and you put on these records and you look at the the, the record albums. Oh my God, you look and at the, the cover art. You and the conversations the that yes. happen. Oh, I remember yes. this band, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it's It's one of the most fulfilling experiences oh, to do fun. that and yeah. it's very stimulating i love doing that i mean that's and, and i think if you have like a like-minded or differently minded mm -hmm. but well you know similarly driven individual mm -hmm. who wants to kind of open their own creativity mm -hmm. and especially if they do it in a very different way like right. i love that to you know make that happen and you know take take the opportunity to go try something new with them and then discuss it. That discussion is a whole. Yeah. What about you? What do you, what do you well, do? I do love going like junkin in Virginia. Yeah, that's the so big fun. thing. People go junkin mm -hmm. and, um, and we'll go and we'll talk about like, Oh my God, I can, I can take this old sign and I can do this with it. Yeah. I can do that with it. And I can, you know, or going, I mean, I mentioned the bookstore. I yeah. kind of love that. Like look at this, cheesy book cover or read the back copy and be like, can I imagine myself, mm -hmm. you know, writing this or reading this, you know, or again, I mentioned like the movie thing where it's like, let's do a thematic movie night yeah. but with just the title and see where it takes us, you know, or I mean, so many times, like I'll 
go on a hike and see something kind of odd. I don't know if I showed you the thing where I had those two columns and there was one that said RSVP on it. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, put, I love I think that. I'll put that picture up. Because that was hilarious. That. I was like, yeah. oh, you know, let's, you know, start now. Like, let's caption this. What the <laughs> hell is happening here? And I was like, it was a portal to a rave on Mount Tally Mount Tamil Pius. And I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. But I mean, those are all things that I do. Often though, the reality is, it's like, I'm going to come home from having run around all damn day yeah. and I kind of need to buckle down and get in the zone because, yeah. you know, I'm a creative professional and I kind of have to do it. And I think that with practice, I think that you kind of get there and I think you can very easily and quickly set up that aperitivo to creativity in seconds. Like you can be yeah. like, okay, let me grab my Make favorite, a cup of tea. Yeah, cup of tea, favorite, my slippers, favorite mug, yeah. mug, whatever, glass laptop set myself up yeah my and, favorite pen and, yeah, whatever it is absolutely then, like all of those little sacred moments that put you into that creative zone yeah and i think that that's the way to go so if you guys want to comment about Please how you get it. in the creative zone or how you what your creative aperitivos are and how you like to kind of get into that mood and whet your creative appetite let us know about that i would below. love to hear it we would love to hear that and um i think that we've yammered about this for long enough that we've been thinking i enough. think so yeah <laughs> that's awesome well well cheers to cheers you to another creative happy hour absolutely happy happy you guys cheers. see you next time bye